Welcome to the Silent Sports and Gaming Channel. You're watching the Silent Sports video blog right here on YouTube via the PlayStation Network. As today's date is November 3rd, 2018. This is episode 72 of the Silent Sports video blog. I'm Troy West and thank you always for joining me and thank you for the support. Um, Saturday is our normal blog, so we'll talk a little bit of everything today. Talk a little baseball, season's over, Red Sox, all your champions, they clinch. Um, I think last Saturday, after I got off here, I think that's when they clinched, beat the Dodgers in five games to win another World Series, day four since 2004. We'll talk a little bit about them. And a Hall of Famer passes away, Willie McCovey died this week. I'll give you a short little brief talk about him. NBA, uh, Warriors, still look like the Warriors. We'll talk about the Warriors. A um, couple of teams are surprising, off to good starts. A couple of teams are not, we'll talk about that. Uh, week nine of the NFL, so big games this week, including the two big ones between the Rams and the Saints. Late afternoon, kickoff there, and Packers and Patriots, the Sunday night game, as Tom Brady will go against the Aaron Rodgers only for the second time in their careers. And we we'll talk about the Browns as well and the Thursday night football game that was garbage the Oakland Raiders being a big reason why. And we'll talk a little uh, college football, a couple of big games in college football today as well, including Alabama, LSU, and a little NHL. And I'll talk about the Maryland football uh, team as well as they finally let go of their coach. Uh, so, got a big show today. So, let's go ahead and get started. Let's celebrate the Red Sox right now. And another reason to admit that I was wrong, Boston clinched the World Series. I believe it was last Saturday, I want to say, um, as they beat the Dodgers in five games by winning, uh, taking the first two at home, and then winning two out of three at Los Angeles to win their fourth championship in, was it 15 years, 14 years, 15 years. 2004, of course, was the special one. It was their first one in 100 years. And that was the year they came back and beat the Yankees. And back to being down 3 nothing in the ALCS. And they wind up clinching. Ever since then, they've been a consistent um, winning franchise. Winning in 2007 again. Then winning in 2013. And then winning this year in 2018. Uh, what's wrong about Boston um, all year? Um, but... Uh, of course, Steve Pitts won MVP, but I would have gave it to David Price personally because he was the person that I thought had to have a good playoffs, and he did. He struggled against the Yankees, though, in that first um, in the uh, division series, but after that, he was sharp, and he carried the Red Sox to be to this World Series. Chris Sale was a little in and out, and then you got the bats with Pierce leading the way in the World Series in particular, but the all the bats was pretty consistent as well throughout the playoffs. They had the best record in the in the league, and they wound up clinching the, the World Series as well. Um, like I said, I picked the Dodgers. The uh, well, I, well, I kind of was leading towards the Dodgers. I just, I guess, I was just rooting. I wasn't really thinking with my mind. But uh, Dodgers, they keep it Kershaw, as you saw in the news that he's going to shot the extension. I uh, wonder if Machado will stay. Um, but uh, starting to lose faith in the Dodgers, they've been knocking on the door for years. I think they, I think this was their fifth straight um, in LCS and their second straight World Series, of course, losing them both. Um, so uh, running out of time. Hopefully Kershaw, who getting a lot of criticism for his uh, lack of play in the playoffs, hopefully he turns it around. And uh, they'd be they'd be a contender next year. It's so Boston, Boston team is young. They're not going nowhere. Um, so. Um, these two teams probably meet again next year it's possible Houston ain't going nowhere they'll still be a contender the Yankees they get some pitching they can challenge Cleveland's still out there so in the American League pretty much set the National League is teams on the cuffs like Milwaukee I think they'll be back next year Cubs ain't going nowhere um, in the West the uh, Diamondbacks and Rockies still got pretty good decent teams um, so very very interesting in the off season to see where Bryce Harper go. Like I said, Machado stays in Los Angeles. But uh, with all that being said, congratulations to the Boston Red Sox. And I was wrong. I think in the beginning of the year, I picked um, I picked Houston to get back. 
And I think in the Nationals, I picked the Nationals. Once the Nationals was out of it by, say, by August, they was pretty much done. Once they, the trade deadline around that time, they was finished. Um, so I lean towards, I lean towards the Cubs and the uh, the Dodgers, like I said, to come out the National League. But um, I was wrong about Boston. I had Boston. I thought they was gonna lose to the Yankees, honestly, in that division series. So. Congratulations to all the Red Sox fans and the Red Sox. Another World Series title. And it'll definitely be a big contender next year as well. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, blog, uh, sad baseball news. Willie McCovey, of course, he's before my time. Um, but I heard a lot of stories about him, um, either on TV. I think my dad mentioned him a couple of times when we used to talk sports. Um, sort of underrated because he played for, I think because he played for the Giants. So he got Bonds. And you got uh, Willie Mays, of course, who was one of the most famous uh, Giants as well. But Willie McCovey, I think he hit, uh, I want to say five, I think it was 523 home runs. Um, he was a good fielder. Um, he was a good all-around player. He did, he, well, he is a Hall of Famer, but I just don't think he get talked about as much as Mays and Barnes do, which is uh, not that surprising. But, um, um, he passed away this week, so I uh, just wanted to mention that. Um, wish I could have seen him play. Um, of course, that was back in the uh, late 50s and 60s when he was around. So, um, but rest in peace. Um, and he was a good uh, person. Uh, I used to see him when he had the Dodgers was in big games. Even, you know, the Dodgers been, um, I mean, excuse me, the Giants. Um, you know, they won a few World Series lately, you know, before a couple of years ago so um he come around with uh mccovey cole was named after him um that big uh splash at right field at giant stadium uh psc park i think it's called um so um giants fans definitely uh lose is a good one and rest in peace will be covered just with to bring it up um uh it's been all over the news so hopefully uh he rested in peace and uh, thoughts out to his family and anybody, you know, who felt it for him passing away this week. So I just wanted to put that out there and talk about it a little bit. Um, so uh, baseball season over, I don't know how I'm going to fit some baseball in because last year I wasn't on, um, I wasn't recording no blogs. So uh, it's my first time I actually have an off a baseball season, off season. So uh, like I said, I might try to fit some NHL in into this normal spot where I usually put baseball or if something happened I talk about it but probably start talking a little bit more NHL now that baseball season is over let's move on to the NBA um, uh, the Warriors uh, won again last night against the Minnesota Timberwolves and they continue to roll um, you see the Clay Thompson game last week um, hitting 14 threes which was a new record breaking Steph Curry's record um, previously um, the Warriors still look like the Warriors. The Rat having a quiet monster year as well. Steph Curry averaging over 30 points a game. So the Warriors are the Warriors right now. Got the one loss, but um, looking sharp as ever. Um, they still go before we were to deal with in the West. So I think they pretty much head and shoulders above the West right now. Even though the uh, Nuggets, 7-1. Uh, and one, I think they won again last night, I believe. Um, they look good. It's early, but they look good right now. Uh, I like how the Celtics look at um, Started off slow, but uh, the, the win against Milwaukee was like how I think they're going to look all year long. That's why I think they're still the best team in the East, despite Milwaukee um, off to their great start. And the Sacramento Kings, uh, I got my Kings hat on. I put it on sort of purposely. Um, they look great. Uh, young team, De'Aaron Fox. Um, this carry, I think he had a triple double. He was the youngest to have 30, 15, and 12, I think. Um, youngest player to ever do that. Um, Kings look pretty good. Look young, look hungry. Buddy Hill playing pretty well as well. Um, Kings look like they're not going to be a pushover. Um, it's early, though. I mean, and they 5 and 3. They like they blowing, you know, getting blowing out the water. You know, but they still look good. Um, you wouldn't think they'd be five and three right now. I think they, I don't know if they played last night or not. Um, but you wouldn't think they'd be over five hundred, um, even though it's still early. So, but they look good. They look like a exciting team to watch at least. 
and the Western Conference is stacked anyway from top to bottom. Even Phoenix um, don't have a terrible team either, so um, even though Phoenix I think has the worst record right now in the West early, but um, they do three teams to look out for. The teams on the other trended down to me. Cleveland Cavaliers, they done. They done already. Now this is why I have to uh, say that I'm wrong already about them. I thought they would make the playoffs at least. Maybe a lower C, 7th AC, but I don't see it now. Um, it's a lot of turmoil, you know, they fired Coach Lou this week, Tyro Lou, he's gone. Um, uh, front office still trying to get things together. Now they gotta look for a coach. Um, J.R. Smith wanted to be traded. A lot of stuff going on. Kevin Love, he's hurt, so I uh, don't think they're gonna be able to recover from this. I think they ain't gonna make the playoffs now. So uh, maybe one of these teams will come up. Uh, I didn't write the Wizards now, but the Wizards have been disappointing to me too. Um, you got too much talent, even though uh, Howard, they play, I think he played last night, but uh, the Thunder went in there and destroyed them, and they look a little good right now too, Oklahoma City, they start off slow, but they look like they got it back together, but the Wizards, to me, uh, no excuse, you guys should be way better than that, John Wall, Bradley Bill, probably arguably the best two-guard tandem in the NBA, and y'all not playing well at all, so, and the Rockets, uh, they did win last night. But they off to a slow start as well. Um, Chris Paul is back, of course, after his suspension. Um, a lot of people worry about their defense, but uh, if you look at the whole league, a lot. Of, if you look at these scores, there's been a lot of high score games, like than normal. So um, the league has definitely changed in my time in the '90s. Um, but uh, I think the Rockets are getting together. I don't think Cleveland will, and the Wizards. It's hard to lose faith for them as well. I had them as a uh, bottom playoff team as well, but I don't think they're going to make it at all either. I think it might be another team that we ain't thinking about that might come up and make the playoffs. Maybe the Hornets, I think I left them out. Because I was like, well, if we look at it, the talent, Cleveland and Washington is better than uh, the Charlotte Hornets, but um, they just they just both been disappointing to me. Probably the two most disappointing teams so far, in my opinion, in the NBA so far. Uh, let's talk. go back to the uh, Timberwolves. Of course, Jimmy Butler, you know he's been wanting to be traded. And he came out and said, I think yesterday, that he had decide if he want to play back-to-back or not. Because, you know, he sat the game before to get ready for the Warriors, but the Warriors pretty much destroyed him, dominated him. Um, I don't know, they, I guess they better take that off. If, Houston, if it's still on the table, that four first-round pick off that Houston put on the table, I think they better go ahead and take it. Um... I don't think you get no better than that. And even though Jimmy Butler is a great player, I think if you do, do go to Houston, I think of Houston differently. I think they could be a possible contender for the Warriors. But um, uh, I, I listen to the ESPN radio a lot, and one thing that I perked my ears up is uh, if you ever heard of Sher Space, uh, Spain that fits. Um, she's uh, I think she's from Chicago, but I know she really based in Chicago. I know a lot about Chicago sports. And if you look at Jimmy Butler's uh, background, of course, Jimmy Butler, uh, I, think he was, I think he was drafted in his late second round. Like, basically, he was a player that had to scrap and get to where he was. He built himself up. Now he's an elite player in this league. And he's saying uh, once he got, you know, that recognition, once he got to the top, basically, he got his money. He's a different person. He's not the same person he was when he was hungry, you know, when he was... Uh, Scrapping, trying to fight for uh, just a roster spot, um, uh, but I think I think she also says uh, desire. He want to be like the the star of the team as well, which I think is uh, Minnesota. He's definitely the best player right now. Of course, Towns and Wiggins still have to be polished, but right now you would say he's the best player. He's the leader, so I think he's getting the same uh, the the public just as he wants in Minnesota, but. For some reason he just don't want to be there, so I think if you're Minnesota, uh, if that Houston offer still the table, go ahead and take it. Get, go ahead and let him go. Um, and uh, hopefully get Bill through the draft, but uh, Coach Thibodeau, who she knows a lot about as well, Sarah Spade will talk about. Um, he's trying to win now. He don't want to get rid of Jimmy Butler. He's trying to dig in and try to keep him, but I think it's just too much turmoil, too much distraction. Um, and it's already shown, so I think you need to just move on and let him go. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next few weeks. Um, 
But he's an awesome player. That's why y'all have been saying he is a great player. I would, wouldn't mind him having him on my team as well. But that drama is still blowing up. So that's it for the NBA this week. Uh, let's move on to the NFL. Week 9. Big games this week. A lot of interesting games. I got my big five here. Let me pull up my um, PC Pickup page. But as I do that, we're going to talk about the Cleveland Browns. You know, they let go of uh, Coach Hugh Jackson earlier this week. Um, and also, offensive coordinator Todd Haley was let go. Um, uh, he came on uh, first take, another show that I watched. Like, I, I watched pretty much everything at ESPN. And he was on there yesterday. Pretty much was, I think he was honest to a point. You know, they asked him, you know, basically, you know, how days was, was this, was that. He just they said that we just didn't get it done. I think he could have been a little bit more honest, but I think he was sort of honest. Uh, they asked him about Todd Haley. He said he the one that hired him. Um, I guess they was trying to grill him up Stephen A. Smith and uh, Max Kellerman. Even Will Kane was on there, too. Basically... Try to get him basically to say is well he did take responsibility but I think he still at the same time the way he talked was like the perception is he still put blame or the people he's saying it's it's my fault but it wasn't all my fault that's basically what I took from the interview yesterday but the Browns um hopefully they can get a I think they need to get a good coach there to help Bayfield they got talent there um help Baker Bayfield develop more um you got a good defense. Um, it's not a bad job, but it's just this division is tough with the uh, Bengals, Ravens, and Steelers. Um, you're in a tough division, but um, the Browns got talent. They should be better than 2-5-1, and one, or is they 2-6-1 and one now? Something like that. But uh, they let him go this week. Um, so hopefully, I don't think he, I don't, honestly, I don't think he'll never be a head coach again. He might get a coordinator job, but I doubt if he ever be a head coach again. I'd be surprised if he ever get a job. And also, Thursday Night Football, man, what a garbage, what garbage that was. The Oakland Raiders, they done, man, like, for this year. They might be done for next year, too. I think they just build it for, they move to Vegas. Um, but I just don't think it's fair for the Oakland fans that's still there and support them. Now, me personally, like, um, I guess as a fan, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but I think if, once they leave... And I might be, I'm not speaking for Oakland fans, because uh, they passed their fans. I don't know how they feel about it. Um, but I can imagine that they're probably upset about it, that you're taking the last two seasons here with us. Then you're going to go to Vegas and want to start to win. But I think most of the fans will come around after a while. They're probably still uh, root for the Raiders and still call them the Oakland Raiders deep down. But um, what they're doing, I think, is despicable. Um, I like, I respect Coach Gruden as well. Um, he's a great coach. I like his mind. He got a sharp mind. Um, but um, I guess he's looking for the future. He got a 10-year contract. I guess he could take his time. I guess his job is really that secure. Um, but me as a competitor, I don't want to. It'd be hard for me to lose games, even if it make my team better. If I know for sure, even if I knew for sure it would make my team better, still just don't like losing. Um, so I don't know how anybody can take that. I don't like to lose at all like anybody that know me you know i'm very competitive even though i'm male manic and mild manic but when it comes to competing um i don't hold back at all so i know that gotta be hard for the players in the locker room and it's just i don't know i just don't i just don't like it but uh that's a team to me they go they probably go definitely get the number one pick I doubt if they win another game this year i don't, I don't see what other game they're gonna win but they got blown away by a third straight quarterback, um, and for the four even though he looks good, but I, I put that on Kyle Shatterhead as well. 49 is a bright future, they do. I like, I think they're gonna be, uh, I say another year or two, because the Rams, um, they right now the dominant team in the West, but I think in about a few years, the Rams, a lot of those players are old on the Rams, especially with that defensive side of the ball. I think they window is probably one or two years to this year or next year, but after that, I think San Francisco will catch it. Uh -oh. So, um, Rams better get it done. I think they win those about two, three years, three years at tops. So, um, but let's get into the picks. Um, I did promise I would have my record and I have it here. I'm 77, 43, and two. I picked every single NFL game this year. 
And that's my record, 77 wins, 43 losses, two ties. Of course, the two ties, the Browns and the Steelers tied, and the Vikings and the Packers tied as well. So that's where the two ties come from. Um, yeah, so uh, very, very um, not bad. 30 games over, so not bad at all. Um, had a great week last week. I went 12-2 last week, so. And I'm already one up because I picked the 49ers to win Thursday night. So I'm already one to know this week. But let's get into the games now. Um, first game, Falcons and Redskins. That's on my list. Got the Redskins in my power uh, rankings. You can see it on Instagram right now. Also, if you watch episode 71 of the blog, you can uh, uh, hear my power rankings. Uh, Redskins tied for fifth in my power rankings. And uh, they look pretty good, 5-2 and two coming in. But this is an interesting game because the Falcons um, try to get it back together. They're now 3-4. and four. Um, Still got a long way to go to catch New Orleans and Carolina. But um, I think that's more of a desperation game for the Falcons. But um, I'm leaning at Redskins here. This was a tough one for me to pick. Redskins, one and a half favorite. Um, I think... The Falcons being outside is going to be a factor. I think the Redskins defense will be able to slow them down. I think you'll see more Adrian Peterson control the clock. I think the Redskins were a close one. I think about a field goal or so. But I think it'll be a tough, hard fought game for Washington. But I think they would it, pull it out. Um, Redskins, of course, uh, first in the NFC East. Falcons are third in the NFC South and need to start getting some wins. Uh, this would be a brutal loss for them if they lose this game. Probably a uh, them they play off hopes even though we still got half the season to go but I'm going to go with the Redskins to win in a close one at home Bears and Bills uh, Bears um, should win this game I don't see why they shouldn't even though they're on the road Bills and they start Nick the in again so enough said uh, I'd be surprised if the Bills even sniff close to this game got the Bears winning big Chiefs and Browns um, same here I think the Browns will be a little bit more competitive. Yeah, they is 2-5-1, so I was right the first time. Chiefs, you know, 7-1. Third on my power rankings. Um, I think they win I think they win by at least two touchdowns here on the road. Um, Patrick Mahomes is the real deal. Um, can't deny that. Uh, we're going to see where the weather changes. Will the, will the Chiefs go more to uh, Kareem Hunt running the ball? Um, but I think they have handled the Browns. I think they... A little bit uh, shocked by every day that's going on. So I don't think they might not be 100% focused for this game. I think the Chiefs win big, at least by two touchdowns. Um, Lions and Vikings. I got the Vikings winning. Lions, up and down team all year. They look like, you know, uh, like they could be a playoff team competing. But then they turn around and have a crazy egg looking game so um i think minnesota's pretty much got their legs back out there and they sort of stumbled a little bit out the gate i think they got themselves back together i think they win they at home they take care of business beat the lions in the tough division game i think they'd be within the touchdown maybe jets dolphins um got the jets winning don't feel that great about it dolphins up and down team as well um but i think the jets uh they said Donald um, having one big player too. Um, went on the road. The office is tough to play um, because of the weather, because of the heat and stuff. But I think the Jets will be ready for that enough. I think they went by a field goal or so in Miami. Uh, one of my big five games here: the Steelers and the Ravens. Ravens four and four. Steelers four two and one. Um, feel the same way about the Ravens that I feel about the Falcons. I think this a uh, be a big, big loss if the Ravens win and lose this game. They beat the Steelers uh, earlier a couple of weeks ago, pretty convincingly, in Pittsburgh. Um, so I'm a slightly lean towards the Ravens. I ain't gonna lie, it's a little bit fad bias. I don't feel great about this pick. The Steelers look like they the Steelers again, even without Le'Veon Bell. And who knows when he's gonna come back. This week nine, so I think he gotta come back by next week. Or uh, his free agency and stuff would be put in jeopardy. So we'll see if he comes back, but. Um, Steelers look focused. They look good the last few weeks. Um, but I'm going to lean towards the Ravens because they're at home. And they'll get up for this game. I think they'll be ready for this game. Of course, these two teams don't like each other. You know that. Probably at one time was the biggest rivalry in sports. 
at one time. Sort of cooled off a little bit because Ray Lewis retiring and Heinz Ward retiring for Pittsburgh, you know. So it lost its lesson a little bit, but it's still a big rivalry. I think the Ravens are edge right now. I say about a five field goal as well. Cause Tucker will kick the game with a field goal and the Ravens will win. Uh, Buccaneers, Panthers. Uh, Buccaneers go back to uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick as they 3 and 4. Panthers 5 and 2. Quiet 5 and 2. I thought about putting them in my power rankings, but I ain't wanted to be a three tape tie at the bottom. The Redskins did beat the Panthers, so I kept it at Chargers, Redskins tying. Um, but I think the Panthers will win this game. Um, I think Buccaneers will play better though. Jameis, um, future looking kind of dim. I don't know if they're going to keep him or not. Um, but Ryan Fitzpatrick is back starting. I think the Buccaneers, though, fall short. I think the Panthers will win and keep pace with the uh, Saints. Texas Broncos got Houston winning a sixth straight if they win this game. Um, I think they'll win. Um, Broncos uh, also sort of in limbo right now. Uh, the game is in Denver, so. Uh, that might uh, even things out a little bit, but I think Houston, um, like just like uh, Minnesota, got their legs back out of the road after the slow start. I think they get the win on the road in Denver. Uh, one of my big five games, uh, Chargers Seahawks, sneaky game. Um, Seattle 4-3 at home. But I'm gonna lean towards the Chargers here. Um, Seahawks is a one point favorite. It's hot, tough to play up there, but I think. Um, they had the long layoff from being in London the week before. I think that helped them deal with the, the crowd and everything else. I think they'd be focused. I think the Chargers will win on the road and improve and to keep pace with the Chiefs as the Chiefs try to run away with the West. Um, but Seattle, like I said, I'm not counting them out yet for a playoff berth, even if they lose this game. Um, but I got the Chargers winning, though, on the road. Uh, probably the, to me, probably the biggest game of the weekend, the 8-0 Rams against the 6-1 New Orleans Saints. Rams, even though they're on the road, is one and a half point favorites, but I would pick the upset somewhat here. I'm going with the Saints. they at home. I think the crowd, they got one of the best crowds, especially when they're winning. I think Drew Brees want to make a statement. Um, I think the Saints defense has been playing a lot better. Rams been sort of skating the last couple of weeks. Um, close win last week against Green Bay. Um, the Broncos, they let them hang around. They haven't been completely shot, but Tar Gurley has been Tar Gurley, and it's been enough. But I think this would be a game they slip. I think the Saints will pull one out at home. Probably the best game of the weekend. We're very excited to see this game it's, uh, tomorrow. So, um, definitely uh, probably one of the biggest games of the year. Um, I got the Saints though winning at home. Um, last of my big five and the last game of the day, the Green Bay Packers at 3-3-1 against the Patriots 6-2. Of course, you know the headline of this game is Rodgers versus Brady. Uh, the debate is always who's better, who's better, who's better. They get to the family doing it on the field. I think they played this one time and Rodgers did win that game, I believe. Um, of course, you know uh, AFC and NFC opponents only play four times, uh, four time, one time every four years. Excuse me, unless they make the Super Bowl. So um, I think one of the times Aaron Rodgers was hurt. So this is only the official second meeting um, since Rodgers became the starter after Favre. Um, but uh, like I said, I think uh, sort of like what most people think. I think Rodgers is the most talented quarterback, especially now. That Brady's getting up there, even though Brady ain't really slowing down at all, but he's more, Rogers more mobile, he can make more throws. Um, but of course, the most accomplished and the best is Tom Brady, though. Um, can't take enough away from him. Five Super Bowl rings, enough said. Uh, and in this game, excuse me, in particular, if they at home, uh, Packers traded away uh, Clinton Dix. Haha, <laughs> Clinton Dix this week. I think that'd be a factor, excuse me. Um, I think the Patriots are straight on my part. They're getting healthier. Gronk is healthy. Got Edelman. Josh Gordon is starting to get his legs as a Patriot. I think they put up a lot of points. I think the uh, Packers not going to be able to stop the Patriots. Um, I wonder if Sony Michelle played this week. He's a question mark. But um, the Patriots have all of a sudden looked deep um, on the offensive side of the ball. I think they put pressure on the Packers. I think Rodgers 
We'll try to keep them in the game, but it'd be similar to last week. It'd be close. But I think uh, Patriots will pull it out um, and win it at home. And the Packers, that'll probably be a blow to them of a playoff berth. Um, so I'm going to go with the Patriots in that game Sunday night. So two big games to end the day. Rams, Saints, and then Packers, Patriots. Um, I think New England wins, though. And our Monday night game, I talk about it on my Monday morning football hangover. Titans and Cowboys. I'm going with Dallas. Um, and I think they win slightly. Of course, you know they uh, acquired Amari Cooper um, last week. Um, Titans, uh, one of those up and down teams. Um, when we least suspect it, they come up. So this could be a game they do that. But I think Dallas, uh, uh, with the Amari Cooper trade, got a shot in the arm. I think they motivated. And I think they win this game. Um, I'm going 24-20. Um, and I'll talk more about this game on Monday, um, live right here on YouTube, um, Monday Morning Football Hangover. So come join me for that Monday. And that'll do it for my NFL picks. Um, about to wrap this blog up. Um, of course, uh, my final thoughts, uh, big college football games today, um, especially the big one in Death Valley. The LSU Tigers will host the number one Alabama Christian Tide. Of course, the LSU is third in the playoffs as well. So um, this is a big game there. Um, a few other notable games as well. Um, so, uh, but that's the main game. Um, I think that game is a night game, so uh, I'll probably check that game out. Um, but I think Alabama's gonna win. <laughs> Uh, I just think they're just way better than everybody else. They have been for years. I think it'll be a close game, though. I think LSU will c compete. But I think Alabama will be too much. I think they win. Um, NHL, uh, been trying to do some research. I looked at the standings. Uh, the Nashville Predators playing very, very well. Um, look like they could be a Stanley Cup contender. Um, the Washington Capitals uh, start off a little sluggish, um, but uh, I'm going to do some more NHL research. I'll probably try to fit it in definitely next week. Um, right, actually, write down some notes for it because the baseball season is over, so there ain't a lot to talk about in baseball right now. Um, but uh, NHL is early, so um, but a lot of teams look like the, the uh, stand is a little bunched up. Um, so nobody pulling away from nobody, um, but we'll see how things turn out in the future. And I have uh, more uh, information as I do more research on the National Hockey League. And I have a segment just for the Hockey League next week. So um, make sure if you're a hockey fan, join me next week. I try to have some information and get my thoughts on some hockey. Even though, like I said, I'm a casual hockey fan. I don't watch hockey until playoff time, really. I started paying more attention to it. The Tampa Bay Lightning, though, that was another team I wanted to mention. Uh, very, very, playing very well as well right now. Um, they've been pretty consistent good for the last couple of years, actually. Um, so we'll talk more NHL next week. Uh, one more thought I want to have. Uh, of course, yeah, everybody heard about the big, uh, I wouldn't want to call it a scandal, but the big mishap in Maryland football. Uh, University of Maryland, of course, and I'm from Maryland. I'm from Baltimore. Um, just a tragedy that anybody lose their life. Um, Joy McNair, um, offensive of lineman for the Maryland Turpins, um, of course, died over the summer after uh, being excessively forced to practice. And then he had a heat stroke and he died a couple of weeks later. Um, the board of Maryland, of the University of Delaware, was sort of try to keep the coach, Coach DJ Thurkin. Um, but then the outcry um, changed that, and he got fired the next day. Well, I wanted to say the president, um, he wanted to let him go, but he was afraid of his own job being in jeopardy. Um, so his first decision was to keep him. Then once he heard the cries of the students, um, the parents of Joy McNair, and a lot of criticism, he went ahead and made the decision to let him go. And I guess he's just saying, uh, if he leaves his job, he leaves his job. He wanted to stay on 
till June, which is his plan. He planned to retire in June. But um, pretty much a long story short, uh, I think the coach had to go. I mean, it's just life. Like when you, uh, um, unfortunately, when you're the boss, even if you don't have hands on with everything, um, if something like that happens, you're responsible. Uh, supervisors, uh, managers, um, you get you get disciplined if you. Uh, I don't want to say subordinate in this case because it's football, but you know, you're in charge. So when something happened on your watch, uh, you get criticized for it. It's just the way it is. And with somebody losing their life, he had to pay the price. He had to lose his job. There's no way. Um, I was surprised by the initial decision by the president because of how adamant he was. But once he explained why, I sort of understood why he made the first decision but uh i don't know what what was on the board of directors minds like why they felt like they had to keep him um but it's probably some type of financial thing or they don't want to really bring another coach here they don't want to keep paying durkin and bring in another coach it might be a whole lot of different little factors and why they kept him and then they say he's not uh directly responsible but a lot of experts that I've heard listen to say the strict consistent coach who really was in charge of the practice at work, um, Joy McNair to death, literally. Um, the coach and the uh, strict consistent coach is, you know, tied to the hip, you know, basically. Like, there's no way Durkin didn't know what was going on. At least, basically, that's what a lot of the experts are saying. Even players that used to play football saying the same thing, so. But even if that wasn't true, like you're the coach, a child lost his life, um, you gotta go, period. Like it's, it may not say fair to everyone, but uh, they just think that's this is the right thing to do. Um, you gotta be responsible, it takes responsibility, and you gotta take responsibility when things like that happen. So even though it started, it was a little rocky, uh, but they made the right decision overall. And Maryland uh, having a good season though, which has been you know overlooked because of every day that's happened. But I think they just won last. I think they six and three, I believe. Um, so they having a pretty decent season for Maryland. You know they having a pretty good season. Um, so uh, glad as well. It's not over, over, but I'm glad that uh, they made that decision. You know you don't want nobody to lose their job. And I heard some other people, you know, sort of like just playing devil's advocate. Um, which is understandable, but I just feel like ultimately that's the right decision. He had to go. He had to be fired. Um, and students hold rallies for Joy McNair um, at Maryland. So uh, uh, your voice could be heard if you uh, do it in the right way. Um, and your people's voices was heard and um, Durkin had to go. Um, but that's my thoughts on that. And they would to end the blog on a sort of down note, but... Um, that's all for this week. Uh, episode 73 will be Thursday. Uh, they're looking here to see who plays. Hope it's a better game than it was last week. I hope so, because that game was terrible. Um, the Raiders didn't show up at all. But, um, it'll be around the Thursday night football game. Join me Monday for the Monday morning f football hangover. We'll talk about all of a sudden these games in the NFL and whatever goes on in college. Um, I'll probably touch on that as well and some other things. So join me live right here on YouTube Monday morning. And also, uh, I launched a new channel. Um, I try to uh, put it, uh, I probably comment it through the channel to get it out there. It's not, uh, I just started it so I can't, there's a lot of things I can't do yet with it. But um, it's called The Open Book with me, Troy West. Um, as I talk about my uh, depression, history, and just uh i want to try to help people that deals with depression and mental health and that's just my way of doing it so i sort of like um basically uh opened myself up so told, told a lot of my stories and i'm gonna continue it on monday as well so i got two days to do monday i'm gonna do the monday morning football hangover we'll do that first then i record it. um another introduction part two i talked more about uh more deeply about myself, uh, I touched on my family, I touched on a lot of things, I touched on uh, how I dealt with uh, my suicide attempts and stuff like that. 
Um, I'll probably dig into that a little bit more um, and talk more about what's been going on with me the last few years and uh, touch more on that more. So uh, definitely uh, you're welcome to join the channel, no pressure. And my slogan for that is no judgment. So if you're a person that's struggling with um, mental health or you feel like you're just alone or feel like you had nowhere to turn and you're thinking about um, hurting yourself or anything of that nature, um, I'm definitely uh, wanna be that voice for you if you can't have it for yourself. And I try to guide you and help you. I'm not a professional, like I always, I warn people on there already. I'm not a professional, not a professional psychiatrist or stuff like that. I still recommend you, recommend you to go to the, the experts on it, but I feel like um, it's good to hear somebody that just been through maybe something similar than you have. And you might can find a better uh, understanding of yourself. And that's my goal to help people. So um, definitely feel free to come over to that channel as well. Uh, much more serious channel, but uh, something I want to do and I'm gonna continue to do it So I have another introduction video on Monday as well part two of that So join me for that or go, go back and look at part one right now. It's on there. So check it out So for that being said that would be do it for the solid sports video blog for this week episode 72 is concluded I'm Troy West enjoy your weekend enjoy all the sports big games in the NFL big college football plate as well of USC, big fight, Daniel Cormier fights tonight for his title. So uh, if you're a UFC fan, check that out. And uh, thank you so much for the support, as always. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, and thanks again.